Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the Z77HD4. So what we have here is a standard ATX sized motherboard. It's actually slightly narrower um, width wise than a typical ATX motherboard, but I'll show you that when I get out of the box. It's the uh, LGA1155 socket, so it will support both second generation Sandy Bridge Intel Core, price, or Intel Core processors as well as third generation Ivy Bridge Intel Core processors. Features the Z77 chipset by Intel, and uh, that gives you a lot of features on the board as well as uh, enabling some of the more advanced features of the Ivy Bridge processor if you happen to go with one of those. Uh, this is an HD4, um, which is mostly talking about the additional display outputs that you have available if you're going to be using the uh, integrated GPU that's part of your Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge processor. Uh, it is also part of the uh, Ultra Durable or UD series from Gigabyte, so that features uh, ultra durable construction for hum humidity protection, electrostatic protection, power failure protection, and high temperature protection. Uh, a few more features listed down here at the bottom. It features a UEFI BIOS, or simply UEFI if you want to get rid of the legacy term BIOS. Uh, that makes it Windows 8 ready, uh, and it also helps it to support things like booting off of hard drives that are larger than two terabytes. It also features a 3D BIOS, which is a graphical interface for the BIOS, which uh, can help you navigate around there a bit more easily, especially if you're not familiar with a BIOS navigation. And I should mention that's a 3D UEFI, but let's not get too picky here. All solid capacitors, again, that's part of the UD construction or ultra durable construction. Intel Core processor support, Z77 chipset. Uh, we also have a glass fabric PCB design. And again, that's going with the ultra durable theme for humidity protection. We have some additional uh, specs listed here on the back. Some more details on some of the specs I've already showed you guys on the front as well as the layout of the boards. Of course, the Z77 chipset gives you access to Intel's smart response technology that will allow you to take an SSD, uh, pair it up with a mechanical hard drive and use the SSD up to 64 gigs in size to act as a caching drive for the hard drive. So basically you get SSD speeds, hard drive capacities, uh, and it's actually a pretty good implementation. If you guys want to check that out, it will give you a much, much uh, more responsive computing experience. Uh, there's a quick little picture of the 3D BIOS uh, look. It actually looks a little bit different from that in the updated version of the BIOS. But that's kind of a, a basic idea of that. Uh, for the HD, capa HD capabilities, you get four display outputs, HDMI, DVI, D-Sub, as well as DisplayPort. Uh, it's fully compatible with PCI Express Gen 3 if you go with an Ivy Bridge processor. So bear that in mind. Uh, you can support PCI Express Gen 3 discrete video cards as well as other, P other PCI Express Gen 3 devices. But if you go with the Sandy Bridge processor, you get PCI Express Gen 2. And if you're going to be comparing the two to each other, um, they're roughly the same because there's not a whole lot of devices right now that you can put on PCI Express that will actually even saturate that bus. Uh, but uh, there, there you have it. Uh, there's some more details here on all of the protections you get with the UD or ultra durable construction. Uh, you also get a feature that I like, which is the on off charging feature for some of the USB ports. So um, even while your computer is off, you can still charge your devices. And then uh, we have sort of a detailed spec list down here in the lower left, which uh, we, you guys can pause and take a closer look at if you're interested. I'm going to go ahead with an, an unboxing. So inside the box, first off, some documentation. You have the all-important user's manual, so you will definitely want to keep this on hand while you're building. You have some cool stuff in here, such as a table of contents. Ooh. You also have a block. Oh, no, that's actually the layout of the motherboard. Block diagram, which is on this page, uh, which I always like that Gigabyte includes that to show you what is connected to what and how. You also have, of course, well, that other page, which is the detailed specs of all the components of the motherboard right there, and then uh, some helpful guides for installing the components. You can also check out our How to Build a Computer series if you are a uh, first-time builder especially. should get some useful tips there. Here's your input-output shield. Uh, it is black. It's color-coded, so you can tell which inputs and outputs are which. There's a look at the back of it. And uh, here is your driver as well as software utility DVD. Uh, I would recommend going to the Gigabyte website to download updated versions of your drivers as well as your utilities, but uh, keep that on hand, particularly to install your LAN driver to get your Ethernet up and running because you can't download unless you have an internet connection. Here's a multilingual installation guidebook, so if English is not your first language, you get stuff like uh, German and Spanish and Portuguese. Uh, you also have, of course, four serial ATA cables. These are all black. Uh, two of them have straight plugs on both ends, and two of them have a straight plug on one end and a 90-degree angled plug 
on the other, uh, they're all SATA revision 1, 2, or 3 compatible, so you will be able to connect your uh, higher end uh, SSDs to these. Uh, and then they also have the little metal clasps, clasps to help hold them in place. So that's all for accessories. So here's a closer look at the motherboard. Uh, it is standard ATX form factor, 12 inches tall, however, slightly narrower uh, width than typical ATX, 8.5 inches side to side versus uh, 9.6, which is the standard. Uh, as you can see, as far as the color scheme goes, blue uh, on the PCB, light blue and white on most of the components, as well as some gray heat sinks. Let me flip around to the back here so you guys can get a better look at the PCB. It is a pleasant color blue, I will say. Uh, also, you got plastic tabs, which are holding on the various uh, heat sinks that are on the board, so the Z77 chipset heat sink down there as well as uh, the heat sink for the VRMs up at the top. Uh, for fan headers on the board you have a total of four, one for the CPU, three for case fans. So CPU fan header right here as well as a case fan header right next to it. Uh, another case fan header right over here next to the 24 pin uh, main motherboard power connector. Another uh, system fan header right down here at the bottom. Uh, pretty much in the bottom center. All of those are 4-pin PWM capable fan headers. So uh, there are your fans. And uh, next up we're going to take a closer look at the components on the board. And we're going to start down here in the bottom right. Uh, first off you have your front panel connectors so you can see those inside the block right there. They're color coded so you can pick them out a bit more easily. There's also a tiny little chart right underneath this, uh, so you can use that or you can reference the manual uh, if you're want to get a bit more detailed. You also have a couple pinouts right there. That's actually a jumper. Uh, you can put or you can put a jumper on that uh, to clear your CMOS and reset to factory defaults. Moving over to the left, we have a couple USB 2.0 uh, front panel headers. Uh, as you can see, labeled USB 2 and USB 1. Each of these will support two USB 2.0 ports, uh, and you can route those to the front or the back of your case, wherever the, you might have those uh, headers. You also have the system fan header that I already pointed out, trusted platform module header. You get a comm header right there as well, and a front panel audio header. Uh, so this will power your front panel microphone and headphone jacks. Also a tiny little SPDIF connector right there as well, so you can connect the SPDIF. Uh, moving up the side here, we can see our chip for the audio codec. Uh, that is a Realtek ALC887. It uh, does support 2, 4, 5.1, and 7.1 channel audio. Uh, bear in mind, if you're going to go for the 7.1 channel audio, uh, you will need to use that front panel header as the analog connectors on the back will only support up to 5.1. Uh, moving over here to the PCI Express slots, uh, you actually have a couple uh, legacy PCI slots down here at the bottom. So those are the larger white ones that you can see right there. So if you have some older PCI devices, you can connect them. A couple PCI Express X1 connectors right there, again, for add-on cards. And then if you are going to be adding a discrete video card, you should plug it into the top connector right here. You do have two full-length PCI Express connectors. Uh, those will support Crossfire X configuration, so you can install a couple AMD-based video cards that are compatible with Crossfire X. Uh, bear in mind, they are triple slot spaced, so it will support dual slot or triple slot coolers, or if you're going with Crossfire X uh, and just two slot coolers, you will have a bit of a gap in between them for airflow, or you uh, will still have access to at least one of those PCI Express X1 slots. Uh, moving over to the right, we have a Gigabyte logo on our heatsink right there, and again, that's the Z77 chipset. Uh, the Z77 chipset controls all of these serial ATA ports right here. The two white ones are serial ATA revision uh, 3, which is 6 gigabits per second uh, maximum theoretical throughput. Also, you have the light blue connectors right there. Those are SATA revision 2, 3 gigabits per second ports. And uh, these are all, uh, will do feature different RAID modes. Uh, you can do 0, 1, 5 or 10, I believe. Let me double check that. Yes, 0, 1, 5 or RAID 10. All supported from that. If you're going with an SSD, plug it into the one of the white ports. Uh, if you're going with a mechanical drive, you can plug it into the white ports, but uh, blue ports will work just as well for that. Also, uh, you do have a dual UEFI on the board, so um, you have a main BIOS and a backup BIOS. You can switch between those uh, for recovery purposes, or for instance, you could have an overclock setting on one and then switch to the other if you want to go back to a stock configuration. Moving up the side of the board, we have this blue connector right there. That's a USB 3.0 uh, front panel header. So if you have a case with USB 3.0 and the 20 pin connector, you can plug it in right there and that will again uh, support two USB 3.0 ports. Uh, main motherboard power connector right there, 24 pin. Route that over from your power supply. And then next to that, we have our DDR3 slots. So you can support up to four DIMMs or dual inline memory modules. Uh, it will support DIMM capacities up to eight gigabytes each. So that gives you 
uh, 4 times 8 which is up to 32 gigs total. It does support overclocking speeds that will vary a little bit depending on the processor that you have, but if you have Ivy Ridge, uh, Intel's support for DDR3's, DDR3 speeds of up to 1600 uh, with an Ivy Bridge processor. Um, also bear in mind that this is dual channel memory, or it is dual channel capable. It will work with just a single stick, but you'll get much better performance if you go with pairs. So I recommend buying identical pairs of memory, so 2 by 4 gigs or, or that sort of thing. Install them in the colored, uh, matching colored slots, again, to make sure you get that dual channel support for additional bandwidth, and that's going to improve your CPUs or your computer's performance overall. To the left of that, you have your 1155 socket. Again, this will support uh, the older or slightly older Sandy Bridge or Generation 2, second generation Intel Core processors. Uh, Z77 chipset is a bit more suited towards the uh, more recent Ivy Bridge or third generation Intel Core processors. Uh, and the primary difference between those uh, as, as in the context of this motherboard video is that with PC or with Ivy Bridge you'll get PCI Express Gen 3 support. With Sandy Bridge, Sandy Bridge you'll get PCI Express Gen 2 support. Uh, you can see some of your power delivery components around here. They have put a heat sink uh, on some of the MOSFETs up here, so that will help keep those cool. So if you are going for uh, an overclock, which you can do if you go with a K SKU processor, like a 3570K or 3770K, help keep those component components a bit cooler for a more stable overclock or more overclocking headroom. You also have your 8-pin supplemental PC, uh, CPU power connector up here in the top left, so make sure you connect that one as well from your motherboard. And finally, we have our inputs and outputs here. Uh, so here is uh, one of the selling points of this board and the HD moniker that you might see in the name, which is the Z77HD4, and that is indicating that we do have high-definition digital connectors here uh, for your video. And again, bear in mind, the video outs here are for the integrated uh, GPU that will be part of your Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge processor, and most of those have them, but not all, so double check just to make sure. Uh, you get a couple USB 2.0 ports right here, as well as a combo PS2 port right there for mouse or keyboard. Uh, you get two more USB 2.0 ports over there, so four of those total. Uh, two USB 3.0 ports right here, and um, that gives you up to four uh, up to four total USB 3.0 that you can have on the board if you make use of this, as well as that front panel header. Uh, for your video connectors, you have a VGA. You also have a uh, display port, full-size display port, uh, full-size HDMI, and then a full-size uh, DVI connector right there. Uh, bear in mind your DVI here and your HDMI here can support resolutions up to 19, 1920 by 1200. DisplayPort can do up to 2560 by 1600. Uh, you also have a gigabit Ethernet port right there, and that is controlled uh, by a Realtek gigabit Ethernet chip. And then finally, you have your analog connectors here for your Realtek ALC audio. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. I did want to point out one other little accessory that you get uh, along with the others I showed you earlier. That's a Gigabyte case badge. Can't forget that. Uh, but this has been the Gigabyte Z77 HD4 motherboard featuring the Z77 chipset and the 1155 socket for Intel second or third generation core processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time.